It's lovely. Good evening, Zambia. Good evening, Africa. And warm welcome to the analysis program right here on KBN TV from Zambia's capital city, Lusaka. With me, Innocent Piri. You can simply call me IP. Thank you so much for having joined us once again on the program as we begin to analyze some of the big stories that happened uh, last week. And of course, we, be, we look at uh, uh, some of the stories to be discussed this evening is uh, the Teachers' Day, the educators who had their celebration uh, that was last week as well. And you could be among the teachers that, of course, uh, turned up in numbers across the world. And tell us how the day or how that uh, commemoration was, what, how significant was uh, this day. That's one of the stories we'll be looking at this evening. And of course, uh, I have in the studio a man who is well vested with these issues that deals with the teacher's affairs. You'll be able to discuss with us as the program goes on. Mr. Victor Mumba, who happens to be in UPE's uh, executive president. And of course, he is our resident analyst right here on KBN TV, the analysis uh, program. On a second story, we've got uh, the story of uh, Bran Mundu, the leader of the opposition in parliament, who has declared war against the speakers of National Assembly in Parliament. According to Honorable Mundwiles, he feels that the presiding officers in the National Assembly are biased towards uh, members of Parliament from the executive. That's one of the stories you'll be looking at later on. We'll show you the video and uh, proceed with the conversation. On our third story, we've got a story of our President Hagende Ichema who has made further changes at PS level. I will be able to read through the story as we go on. Remember that uh, these changes have just come two weeks from the time he also fired and had some other individuals with uh, some reshuffles uh, in that process. On our fourth story, we've got a police deny Socialist Party Kitwe rally. And that's the story, of course, that will be up for discussion. Remember, some of you, you might have read the story, the letter rather, which, uh, which was written or not the, by the Socialist Party, not find the police of wanting to protest in Kitwe. And there was a response coming from the Zambia police in that, to that effect, indicating that uh, it was an impossible for the Socialist Party to go ahead with a rally because uh, uh, due to security concerns around that. On our other story, we've got a story of Israel, which has gone to war once again with Palestinians. So we will find out what is going on and how can we be able to bring or basically uh, to dialogue as the world in general. Because remember that uh, uh, if there is war going on, be it between the Israel and the Palestinians, and also here in Africa, we are equally affected. Remember that Africa is a land-linked continent. Of course, we are in trouble if the big giants are fighting at that end. Again, there is another story which we'll be looking at over Chilofi Atali, the leader of Economic and Equity Party, who was... Uh, uh, who intends to petition the Attorney General and the government in general to stop paying the former president, Edgar Chagualungu. According to him, he feels that uh, the former president is too actively involved into politics. These are some of the big stories to be looked at this evening right here on the analysis. You can send in some of your questions, some of your topics that you think should be dived on as we go on with the conversation this evening, of course, uh, Pastor Kenneth Mambo is not with us. We hope that by next week, you'll be able to uh, join us back. But allow me to wish you, Boss PK, all the best. And of course, uh, I know that you could have been here, but um, I want to believe that, uh, of course, you are attending uh, to other commitments uh, elsewhere. We will hope to see you next week. Otherwise, the program continues. My guest is uh, Comrade Victor Mumba, who happens to be Nupe's executive president. He is also a resident analyst. Uh, Mr. Mumba, good evening and welcome to the program. Thank you, IP. Good evening. Great. It's been a marathon for you, I believe. Haven't rested um, IP, I think, for the past three weeks. Right. Uh, <laughs> it was actually this... Uh, afternoon that I arrived from where I had gone and uh, just had to quickly have a bite on some snack and drink, mm. then rush over to this place. To speak to the country. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Sure. Well, let's get into it. Uh, before we look at the Teacher's Day, I know it's a big ele elephant in the room. 
because I've got a number of questions that I have for you and the people of Zambia, including the teachers out there who are watching the program, uh, tell us where on how you celebrated uh, this year's Teachers' Day. Sending those messages via the number on the screen, and you can also send in using our social media handle, uh, KBN. Let's find out from you, in case there are some other stories that you think uh, can be brought into the discussion beyond what I have. I think what you have, IP, is uh, sufficient. More than enough. I think that is more than enough because we need to exhaust them. Right. Yes. Thank you so much. Let's get into the Teacher's Day. I think it's something that, of course, is at your heart. You have, you have lived longer and you've served for a long period of time in the uh, teaching uh, industry, teaching sector, and also as a teacher or a labor union in this country. How was uh, this year's Teacher's Day? Okay, I think just like uh, any other Teacher's Day, mm. the teachers stand out in numbers <clears throat> to celebrate their day. Uh, this year's Teacher's Day was celebrated under the theme, mm. the teachers we need for the education we want. Right. The global imperative to reverse the teacher shortage. It was, of course, a very long theme. Right. Yeah. Um, the teachers we need for the education we want. Mm. means a lot. Right. The teachers we need for the education we want. Uh, the global imperative to reverse the teacher shortage. Mm. So, um, of course, people traveled to all the corners of the country right. to address the concerns of the teachers uh, during this day. Mm. But um, <coughs> suffice to say that uh, for quite some time now, a teacher has had the number of challenges, even as uh, they serve uh, governments. Mm. The, the challenge has been that uh, governments have been behaving like um, a bus conductor. Mm. Remember, I'm saying mm. governments. <clears throat> yeah, mm. because some of us have seen a number of governments come and go. Right. So I'm saying they are behaving like a bus conductor. Mm. A bus conductor doesn't care much about the people on board. Cares more for the would-be passenger. For this would-be passenger, they can stop anywhere <clears throat> to pick them. Right. They can even follow them to pick them where they are. And they will call them many endearing terms. Daddy, mommy, boss. Auntie, uncle, Muyenda. <laughs> are, are you getting the concept? Yeah. <laughs> but those that are on board, those that are already seated on the bus, are not as precious to the conductor as those that are about to get on board. And when you are a passenger, just know that um, immediately you get on board, you have ceased being important to the bus conductor. We, we have heard of the quarrels that uh, when you complain, for example, if a lady says, the conductor is in Ankarebuino, he will say, just sit. You, you see? So when you want to drop off, he will tell you, you can't drop off here. This is not a designated uh, bus stop. I will drop you off where you are supposed to drop off. But when picking, th 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 these people pick from any point. They don't say, you can't get on the bus from here. No. Right. Even on the highway, they stop for the passenger to get on. What are we trying to say? That uh, there is so much in terms of uh, promising those that are outside employment. Right. Every year, recruitment takes place, bringing them on board. And those that are outside, those that are not in employment, are looking forward to getting employed. Once they are employed, 
You hear no certain allowance hasn't been paid. You hear no there's no accommodation. Just uh, sleep in this classroom. You can sleep in this classroom. After all, you are not married. After all, you are even lucky that you were employed. Your friends out there are not employed. You tell them, look, in this area, I don't have materials to teach. You'll be told you are supposed to be resourceful. That's why you were taught in that college. So you need to be resourceful. We have two issues that have beset teachers for quite some time lately. Issues of upgrades and uh, uh, confirmations. What is happening, IP, is that uh, these teachers are upgrading. They are feathering their education. They might have been employed on the basis that they are diploma holders, for example. But while saving, they have gone to acquire degrees. So they come back from the universities with degrees. Now, when you come back with a degree, you are supposed to be placed correctly so that you start getting paid as a degree holder. But this IP in most cases has not happened. It has not happened. These teachers have continued, for example, getting paid as diploma holders. When they are asked, they are told there is no money. When money is available, we will do that. Then, when we talk about confirmations, remember th there is continued construction of schools. And some of these schools, once they are constructed, yes, they may be gazetted, but they are not given the establishments. Now, if a school is not given the establishment, for example, it means it has no positions known at PEMIC um, department level. Meaning the Ministry of Finance does not know the existence of that particular school. So those positions that are found there, for example, for the head teacher, the deputy head, the heads of department, and the teachers, whether they are 25 or 30, they are not known by Minister of Finance. So what they do is, they will construct this school. The Minister of Finance is not yet ready to fund the positions, but because there is overwhelming need, for the children to have access to education in that community. They will say, okay, get that particular deputy head, write that this head, deputy head is promoted to the position of head teacher. This person will go and manage this school. Look for any head of department, promote them to the position of deputy head to join that head teacher there. Then, Look for those degree holders, the subject teachers, promote them to the positions of heads of department. Send them there. Then let's look for teachers nearby. They go and teach there. Now, we've got laws in this country and conditions of service. For example, you cannot act beyond three months without being confirmed. That's what is there. When you act for three months and you are not confirmed, it's assumed you have been confirmed. And you are supposed to be placed in the scale that is substantive. So if the deputy head is in J, the head teacher is in K, this deputy head who has been promoted to the position of head teacher is supposed to move in terms of certain scales from J to K, but you will be in that particular position acting as head teacher years on end. Some of them IP have acted for more than five years. Minister of Finance says we don't have money. That particular person that we are calling head teacher on paper is deputy head. When they go to get paid, it's deputy head. They are not known as head teachers. And remember, 
where he was, that's where he's getting paid from. That school where he was. And whoever is acting also in that position or in those positions as well cannot be confirmed because those positions have got people. Not until the positions are given to this school and they are funded so that their payroll, these teachers, including the head teacher, the deputy head and the heads of department, can migrate. They will continue complaining. And this is what is on the ground. Yes, we know that attempts are being done to confirm and um, upgrade these teachers. But the rate at which we are doing so is painfully slow. For those that need upgrades, IP, we have got uh, more than 19,000 teachers. Right. Now, if we are talking about more than 19,000, it's, it's a huge number. Yeah. But government can only manage 1,000 per year. It would mean IP taking 19 years to address these issues. So we are saying, because education sector accounts for almost half of the civil service. And if you don't address the challenges that are inherent in there, you are sitting on a time bomb. Service delivery can be affected because you have dampened the morale of this particular important professional. Without this professional, you can't have these other professions. What is even more demoralizing, IP, is to see the former pupils of these teachers coming back as teachers with degrees and placed in higher scales. So if I was teaching, for example, let's say 15 years ago at this school, the child I taught went to university. Maybe the child I taught in grade 8 finished, went to university, got a degree, and is employed as a degree holder. Whilst I'm in the salary scale G, which is lower, this former pupil of mine will be in the salary scale I, which is higher. Notwithstanding the fact that I have two qualifications, this diploma and this degree. So instead of employing another degree holder, why didn't you advise the system at that point to say, can we have an internal recruitment? We move these that have got degrees first to the appropriate scales. And when they move, they leave behind the IP vacancies that others can later on take up through, you know, normal recruitment. That's how it's supposed to be. In that case you are appreciating the human resource that you have. We shouldn't um, create a picture, IP, that we are pretending to address the concerns of the teachers. Because if you pretend to be addressing the concerns of the teachers, teachers as well may start pretending to work. So they will say, let's pretend to work as they pretend to address our concerns. A teacher enters a class, instead of teaching, is narrating stories of how he grew up. And you have 80 minutes, he just narrates the stories, then he leaves. That is pretense. He's pretending to be teaching. He may have a lesson plan, but he's not working. And that is what we need to avoid. That's a painful story, if you ask me. I, I just love the way you are breaking it down, you know, starting with a story or an example of uh, a bus conductor, you know, in which, again, you've uh, categorized or you've put all the success, successful governments uh, to task, you know, regarding these issues around. And I'm getting a general feeling from you as a representative of the teachers out there that... We, we may have a number of these teachers who are, of course, teaching, but they are a demotivated workforce. And if you ask me, when you've got a demotivated human uh, resource in, a, in every institution, and then there will be no productivity. 
a demotivated workforce in my view i feel that is worse than an atomic bomb you are right ip you are very right and uh, this is what we've been telling even the upnd government to say yes you've clocked uh, about two years in office now you found these challenges we will know you have um, come with that commitment to address the issues that have beset the education sector. Mm. For example, the teacher <laughs> pupil ratio, they are equal to the task. By the way, if there is a sector where they have exceptionally performed well in, is the education sector. On, on, on that one, they need kudos. But again, it's the issue of uh, maintaining the human resource. Correct. And motivating the hum Correct. human resource. If only, even as we go for negotiations, IP, they simply say, I think is enough is enough. Can we quickly use the resources that we have to upgrade and confirm the teachers that are there? They will actually be motivating the teachers that are in service there. The teachers will be very happy. That will be as well unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Teachers will be very happy. And we've been as well calling upon them because apart from these challenges I've talked about, we have challenges of accommodation. Right. A teacher is a, a professional just like any other and must be respected. It is the duty of the employer to provide decent accommodation. Mm. Decent, not simply accommodation, but decent accommodation. IP government can do everything on their own. And we've been saying, the same way you have employed the triple P, public-private partnership, in the construction of roads, where you are saying, these roads that are econ economically viable, you call upon the private players to, to, to do the roads and allow them to use targets to get the money that they would have invested over a period of time. That, that's a very good uh, mm. way of doing things. Because you don't have the money. Why then don't we do the same when it comes to constructing housing units for the public service employees, who include in this case the teachers? And we are not even looking for contractors or private players from outside the country. These places, rural places especially, IP, have got uh, managed people. They have got men and women with money. If those businessmen and women are asked to partner with government, where government provides land, then you ask these businessmen and women to come forth and declare how many simple but decent housing units, IP, they can construct in the rural areas within two years. We are going to have our people decently accommodated because every business person would want to partner with government. Why? Government is the biggest spender. And you can have a contract in Vubwe because of how good you are when it comes to doing the job. They will again contract you in Aloro. They can contract you in Chienge. They can contract you in Gwembe. Even in Lavush Manda. So it is very possible that these men and women and the Zambians for this case, in this case, can come forth and help government accommodate its employees. As we continue talking, I want to just show the, this video on the clip. I know that some of your members, even as they were marching last week, um, I think others were, uh, you know, in, in a fancy way, but the message was delivered uh, showing their concerns and their anger that um, we are not happy, you know, and uh, that was expressed while they were marching. And something that you are going to capture in this video, they are saying, we taught you some years back, and then today you are driving, while us are not driving. It quantify your submission, which you've given on this forum, Comrade Muyumba, that uh, a number of teachers out there are demotivated or they feel neglected. I can give an example. And I want to assume that even before the 30,000 
teachers we recruited last year, we had already, you know, a lot of pressure in these classrooms. Okay? But again, we've got more pupils that have gone to, to, to school today. And we've got a teacher who is less or not motivated at all. Let's watch this video and then later on we'll come back for the discussion. Hello, hi. All right, thank you so much. This video there that we wanted just to subject you to. I'm sure you've heard the uh, the rhythm or the song being uh, or the chant, uh, if you wish. You've heard it for yourself? Yes. Mm. So in short, they are saying, look, it's like we have been stagnant. All right. We've been stagnant as um, people that have enabled you to become what you are now. Apart from that, in that song, you can talk about lack of respect for a teacher. A teacher, in short, is saying, you never respect me. You never recognize me. But you need to realize that you are what you are because of me. Had it not been for me, you wouldn't be who you are. So it is a reminder, not only to government, but to the communities in which we come from, that we need to give this respect back to a teacher. Because it's a mother of all professions. It's a profession that changes out all these other professions. Yes. IP, you are IP today, seated there because of a teacher. Indeed. Talk about an engineer, a doctor, an accountant, a nurse, a, you know, politicians, whatever they may be. It's because of the teacher. So respect is needed. And um, we have been calling upon government to give respect back and authority to this teacher. We feel this teacher has been deprived of the authority that they once had. This time around, it's been difficult for a teacher to discipline a child. Because once the child reports, the DC, the district education board secretary, the counselor, the MP, who descend on the teacher. They all get involved. They all get involved. Just because the pupil has complained. So to avoid getting entangled in these challenges, problems, IP, you a teacher would rather stand aloof. And when a teacher stands aloof, the center cannot hold. Things fall apart. So you see indiscipline, you see laziness, you see failure. These are the things you see. Teachers are professionals that can change communities. Teachers are professionals that can change generations. Right, right now, a teacher is still looking for their right place. Is this where I belong? Or I should be careful even as I treat? Those are the questions a teacher is asking themselves. Government must realize that these are not sadists. They are people who know the psychology of a child. Even parents are supposed to give support to this teacher. If this teacher is to come out the way they are supposed to come out. To guide the child in short. But alas, we've been told this child now has more rights than the teacher. Rights come with responsibilities. But if your children go to school with rights, of course, mm. but no traces of responsibility, you have 
a lot of people coming out there more confused instead of getting educated. And you have a nation of people that lacks respect, of a people that cannot, you know, show uh, gratitude. A country with people that are lazy, can't work hard. They, they, they can't appreciate the dignity of labor. So you end up confusing the entire nation. And I can assure you that if we haven't yet reached there, we are about to reach there. Because the signs are there. The writing is on the wall. I'm asking myself right now, as you are explaining, uh, Mr. Miumba, and I'm thinking that uh, what happened during our days in schools? Were we being mistreated? Were our teachers being so hard on ourselves? Because I'll tell you one thing. I mean, this is a story which, of course, many people can share with, with, with us, that uh, we lived in the days in which if a teacher uh, beats or disciplines you at school, you are even praying that this teacher doesn't tell your parents. I hope and pray that this story will end here, that I was beaten by a teacher, because if the story is told to my parents, I'll be beaten much you know, harder than what I'm receiving here. Were we being mistreated? We were not being mistreated. And I think we are what we are because of that kind of discipline. And we were not being beaten for nothing. Right. There's a certain form of behavior and conduct that was expected of us at that time. And it's true. If a teacher reports to your father that your child did this and I punched the child, then you are in trouble. You are in trouble. You didn't plead with the teacher, please don't tell my parents. Of course. And that's what we are lacking, uh, IP. Even the Bible talks about uh, the, the, the road, okay? Mm. And the child, you need to spoil. Mm. If you don't spoil one, you spoil the other. So a bit of discipline is needed for the child to do the right thing. I can assure you that um, there are countries there that have got disciplined citizens. And disciplined citizens bring about uh, development. First of all, it's time management, they are late. Okay? It's about honesty. I forget my item here. I'll find it where it is. And if Someone knows it's me, they'll bring it. It's about values in short. But um, not until, as I've always said, um, IP, governments realize in this country that uh, you can't develop until you change people's attitude. We'll continue in this quagmire we are in. Um, remember, it was the, the, the education... Uh, the, the, the teachers we need for mm -hmm. the education we want. Yeah. The education we want. The question is, what kind of education do we want? And what kind of a teacher do we need? A it, teacher who is not motivated? That, that's the thing. So we and need a teacher, a teacher who is, is not motivated, motivated. What kind of correct, an education correct. do we want? That's the thing. Mm -hmm. So we need a teacher who is motivated through not only good pay, right. but decent accommodation, and respect from the community. Remember? Mm -hmm. These are the things we are talking about. Right. The teacher is supposed to be given. And then when we say the education we want, the question is what kind of education do we want? Quality. Quality education. And what is quality education? Quality education is that which is responsive to your needs. Okay? As a community, as a country. Quality education is the one that you can use to exploit the physical environment God has given you. What kind of physical environment has God given us? God has given us fertile soils. God has given us beautiful trees. God has given us a beautiful climate. God has given us minerals in this country. God has given us water. Talk about, you know, biodiversity in its entirety. Beautiful. But what does our education do? 
it teaches you to know who discovered the sea route to India from Europe. <laughs> so you need to have the name of the guy who <laughs> discovered the sea route. Whichever way that could have been. <laughs> it, it asks you to tell who met who at Ujiji. Okay? In fact, you may not even know where Ujiji is. All you learn is Ujiji, Ujiji. And why they met. And, and why they met. You see? It's about mm -hmm. how many times right. Muslims pray. That's a kind of education that is given. But this is not the education we want. Right. We want the education that is going to give us skill. This education I'm talking about is useless. Because even at home as you are reading a novel, after school, you can learn about these things. You can. Now we have told very intelligent pupils, pupils that are, you know, talented in carpentry, talented in plumbing, talented in bricklaying, talented in music, talented in comedy, that they are useless. They will go nowhere. Why? Because they cannot pronounce properly the name of the guy who discovered the sea route to India. That's what the problem is. And uh, before I lose this thought, um, IP, mm. when you go to other countries, they will show you all the historical sites and even uh, take you to places of prominent people. It's tourism, right? Eh? Here we are stuck to traditional tourism. Okay? Victoria Falls, flora and fauna, you know. I've never seen a queue in Chilenge at KK's house to explain which room, which bedroom was Taunda sleeping. What about the children? Do, do, do we have that history? Have we advertised enough that even through the same we can be making money? Look at this place where you buried your, your former president. That should have been a tourist attraction place. When you come to where Mwanawasa is, say, okay, the history of this president is A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. You go to uh, Chiruba. You go to Arabi. You explain, you go to Kaunda. But it's a no go area. We don't know whether there are ghosts there or what, but in other countries, it's tourism. And people are appreciating these leaders, who they were and what they did. And the KK burial site was actually vandalized three months after the burial. You see? No protection whatsoever, no security. So, so we don't know about ourselves. When a child is passing there, you can't even say, okay, let me take you to this place so that you learn more. Children are not part of our history. We are not part of our history. We have disconnected ourselves from our own history. Is it difficult for the Minister of Tourism to say, we have opened up the following places, areas. The old state house, so as it is called in Chile, Chile. Mm. Please come through. You learn more about KK. We have issues to do with Lenchina. Okay? What kind of, what, what kind of a human being was Lenchina? Where can we learn more about Lenchina? What about Mushara? How? And all these prominent people, people that are part of us, their information should have been at our fingertips. Uh, but they'll teach you about Vasco da Gama. And you need to memorize about Vasco da Gama. They'll teach you about Napoleon. You need to know something about Napoleon. That's the kind of education. You will learn about things that, you know, the Drankesbeck Mountains in South Africa. A place that you may never go to in Pumalang province. But you have got Muchinga escarpment in your own uh, country that 
you know nothing about. You know nothing about. Even when you are passing, you can't tell that, okay, this is Mchinga escarpment. We don't care about it. We don't care about it. And then, is that the education we want? Wow. This story will have to continue, Mr. Mumba. Believe me, we can go on and on and uh, unpack or pack these kind of stories because there's a lot that we need to do, more especially the education sector. Because if you ask me, is, this is one critical sector which can answer to all the problems that we have. If we are to transform this sector, uh, beginning with the human resource that we have, empowering them, then later on, I'm sure all the sectors will just correspond because yes. we would have invested heavily, Correct. not only investing in employing people, but sustaining or empowering the individuals around this. Correct. We'll come back to that. Thank you. All right, let's get to our story number two. Of course, we look at uh, the uh, the story, of course, where President Agendisha Mai did actually made some changes at, uh, I mean, at a PS level uh, that was last week. Let me just uh, see if I can read uh, the entire statement. Um, and uh, just to update to some of you that you may not be aware, I hope the director can also uh, show the, uh, the, the, the letter on the screen there as we go on with the conversation. I'm just trying to look at the letter there so that we, we move on the same page. Okay, so the letter was actually delivered or released on the 60th of October 2023. Uh, President Takende Ichema has made changes at uh, permanent secretary level. The details of the story is that President Takende Ichema has with immediate effect appointed uh, Mr. Peter Mumba as a permanent secretary at the Ministry of uh, Energy, a pursuant to Article 141, subsection 1 of the Constitution of Zambia. The story goes further that the president has since transferred a permanent secretary at the Minister of Energy, Mr. Peter, uh, Mr. Mr. Himba Chelo, uh, to the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries in the same capacity. The head of state has also exercised his powers vested in him uh, by transferring the permanent secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, internal. Co uh, international Corporation, Ms. Uh, Isabella Lemba, to Cabinet Office. That's a letter which was uh, signed off by the Cleson Hamasaka, who happens to be the Chief Communications Officer at the uh, State House. That's a story there that, of course, uh, that we saw last week. Let me hear from what my guest has. Just within a space of two weeks, we've seen the President again making some further, you know, changes. It's like he's becoming a coach now, trying to see which player can perform better in which ministry or which um, jersey. What does it mean? Yes, and uh, this is expected going forward. He has been in office for <coughs> two years. Mm. Yeah. Um, I will say this again, that um, I paid attention to him when he was addressing the nation during festive season. But I think that should have been the New Year's message mm. to the country. He said, no excuses in 2023. No excuses. All right. In this year, we are entering. Where I sat, I was clapping. All right. I, I was like, okay. Uh, these sound to be words of a man who has realized Either that uh, <coughs> the strategy was not good, the people is working with our okay, mm. or the strategy is good, but it doesn't have the people. So it means uh, between the two, he has to change one. Right. Either the people or the strategy. Because if the strategy is good and it's not... Uh, I mean, it's the people that are not okay. Mm. You change the team. You put up the team that is equal to the task. Mm. I don't know if you are getting me. Yeah. Because you can only give excuses when you feel you have not performed to your own expectations and also expectations of the people. 
So when we started the year, I saw there was no shake-up in cabinet. Even at, um, you know, senior technocrat level, such as PSs, no one was touched. They were simply moving. So I thought maybe it was uh, the strategy. <laughs> These people are still there. <laughs> now that we are nearing the end of the year, we see these changes taking place. And um, I know excuses are still there. Excuses are still there. And this is where the president has to sit down and ask himself, how many times am I going to say there ought to be excuses in this year? I can tell you that um, our politicians are the uh, widely traveled people in our country. Those that have gone and those that are still there, they'll tell you about Europe, about America, about Africa, about Asia. Mention the continents. Right. They know how clean other nationals are. In our country, I think maybe we think cleanliness is going to take God to intervene. That uh, probably God is going to, you know, from heaven make an announcement that Zambians be clean now. Then we congregate and say, God has warned us, we need to be clean. Then we start being, you know, clean. It doesn't work out like that. It's about policies that government come up with. How our people live. It's about the, the, the values we hold dear. How do we manage time? I, I cannot lie, IP. I admire the military. Those are a no-nonsense people. When they say we meet at seven hours, everybody at seven hours is there. Even the way they walk, you go to any place, you'll be able to tell this one is a soldier. It's the kind of training. We are not saying we should be beaten or we should go for military training. No, what we are saying is, can we have values that others have? Development for any country is not something you hand over to the people. No, it's what the people do with their own hands. So when you show them the way, then they walk that way. They go, you lead, they go. You show them, this is where we are going. Where have we been told to go? And this is what we've been talking about. Look, right. <clears throat> our country is rich in minerals. How many of us as Zambians can proudly say they get involved in the mining or extraction of these minerals, not only for their own good, but for the good of the communities in which they live. How many of us can proudly say so? Right. I want us to give enough time to the viewers uh, on the program to contribute this evening uh, via phone calls and uh, later on uh, text messages. But now we go to our third story and uh, just see what transpired in the National Assembly last week in which uh, we did see some, you know, forms of confusion there uh, between the Deputy Speaker of National Assembly, second Deputy Speaker, uh, that's uh, Mr. Moses Moyo, and also who had, he decided to evict the leader of opposition, Mr. Bran Munduwile. Now, we are going to show you these two videos. Uh, the first video, it explains to you how it started at a point in which uh, Honorable Munduwile wanted to raise a point of order in a way to uh, you know, raise some concerns on how you know he felt that the opposition is being you know humiliated by the speakers or presiding officers, and later on this triggered to a press briefing which Mr. Mundwil again held, and at that point he decided to declare a war against the presiding officers. So let's see these two videos. Later on, we'll come back with a discussion. There's a point of order. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this very important uh, opportunity you've given. My point of order is pursuant to Standing Order 44, duties of the Leader of Opposition, and specifically at C, to assist the presiding officers to maintain discipline in the House. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, we that, now you didn't indicate that that point of order is against who? On who? It's, it's, it's on the house. I'm asserting my my role to help you. I want to help you. You Mr. can't. The rules don't allow you to do that. But it's here. That order that is one of your rules. But on the point of order, rules how you can raise the point of order. It's not allowed. How? Read. Read your rules. They won't Mr. Speaker, that you, is one of if, your roles. If that you allowed me to speak, may you take it, your seat, Honourable Member? You. Take your seat. Yes. It's not allowed. So your point of order is not admitted. Honourable Member for Kafinsa, let's proceed. Mr. Speaker, this is what you are causing a problem now in the house. Why don't, no, 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 don't say no. Don't say no. You are causing a problem in the house. Honourable Member for Kafinsa. For as long as you are only going to allow those to speak, there is going to be a problem here. Honorable we are ready to be punished, uh -uh. Mr. Speaker. Honorable we will not continue with this mediocre. Sergeant Atoms. We will not continue with this Sergeant mediocre. Atoms. For as long as you only allow them to speak, Sir. my members cannot speak. No, we can't allow this. Point this point is a house of order. Point of order. I am ready to face the consequences on behalf of my members. Uh -huh. I okay. cannot continue. Sergeant Atoms. Sergeant Atams. Ensure that the rid of opposition is out of the house. Sergeant Adams, do your job. Ensure that he's out. Those of you who are going out, you are free to go out. Do we continue with business? Some of us are to a privilege to serve even earlier, you know, under other presiding officers. It's indeed a shame to see what this parliament has become. Now, when you look at the freedom of our members, our members are not free. I want to say this to presiding officers starting from Madam Speaker, First Deputy Speaker, Second Deputy Speaker. The members of Parliament that come are elected members of Parliament. Don't turn it into a prefect student arrangement. We feel so disrespected. These are elected members. You want to call upon an elected member and say, sit down, as if he's your child? To the presiding officers, I want to say this. In my capacity as Lead of opposition. The lines have been drawn. We will no longer allow you presiding officers to abuse the members. No, disrespect them. The standing orders are very clear on how you address members of parliament. If you, the, if you, the presiding officers, are the first one to breach the standing order, do you know what that means? Then the standing orders are at large. You cannot refer to the same standing orders when you want to discipline a member of parliament. If you disobey, you disrespect a member of parliament. A simple instruction, a simple request, one of the member, please take your seat. That's respectful. 
you cannot be telling members of parliament every day, I'm warning you, I wish to warn you, sit down. No, no, no. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker, that should come to an end. That should come to an end. Lines have been drawn as members of parliament who will no longer take that disrespect. We will not take it anymore. This is the House of Members. You are mere umpires. Don't tell yourself to be owners of that house. That's the house of the people. We are not strangers in that house. I will not come into that house at your mercy. I was elected by people of Porokoso. The people of Blunte elected you. People of Kampinsa elected you. The owners of the house. The people of Chirubi elected you. Bakampiung, it's the people of Swangandu that elected you. Yeah. The people of Lukasha elected you. Absolutely. You don't come to this house and people say, sit down, member of Lukasha. Because the speaker does not like the way you're looking that day. They think they should not point at you to speak. No, 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 no. I want to make one solemn undertaking. We will not take that anymore. I'm afraid we will not take that anymore. We are ready to pay the consequences. We are ready to be punished a thousand times. We will not stop until the House begins to operate as a normal parliament. Not anymore. We have tolerated for too long. Two years is long enough. People get certificates and diplomas in two years. Why can't Moyo for once learn how to handle the House? We will not allow Moyo to become a champion in that House. We are de I am declaring war against Moyo. Moyo, you will not have it easy in that House. I am ready, like I say, to face the consequences. But not allow Moyo to destroy the house. It's about the country. This is about the country. We will not be mistreated by this incompetent presiding officer called Moyo. And we sit back and allow it? I will not sit back. His incompetence is obvious. His incompetence is obvious. All of you know that. The fact that you've been quiet, we allowed him time to learn. But now, we do not want Moyo to preside in that house. We demand that Moyo is removed as Speaker of that house. Because he is reducing the decorum and etiquette of that house. We, the representatives of the people, can no longer sit back and watch Moyo, Moses Moyo, destroy this parliament. <laughs> the message to Moyo is that you are not fit to run that parliament. Moyo, you are incompetent and cannot continue to preside over the affairs of the house. Moyo, I want to promise you, until you... Yeah. Alright, thank you so much. Uh, these are the two videos we wanted you to watch in case you, uh, you missed out. Uh, that's what transpired in the National Assembly and later on we did see uh, Honorable Brian Mundwele holding a press briefing uh, giving his uh, own uh, position over the uh, party in his capacity as leader of uh, the opposition. You watched the video. Yes. What does it mean? Uh, what is going on there? What I can say is that uh, there is deterioration <laughs> taking place at Parliament now. Mm. Yeah, there's deterioration, and uh, it's unfortunate that, uh, to me, the person that is on the receiving end is uh, someone I've considered to be a mature MP, uh, Munduvire. Mm. Yeah, uh, Munduvire, I think even when he stands to talk, when you are a speaker, take time to listen. You will learn one thing, yes, from Munduvire. And uh, I don't think there would have been uh, any need, especially when you are a referee as a speaker, <laughs> to bring about such um, an event. It, it was not uh, necessary. It wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary. Uh, and when you are presiding over the affairs of the house, be partial. Be impartial. Anyway, sorry for that. Be impartial. Be fair. Let everyone feel respected. We saw this even in the previous parliament that the speaker was one-sided. It's not supposed to be that. It shouldn't be about, okay, but both the government of the day 
really doesn't need any favor, especially in the parliament. That is a place where people should be free to talk. Yes, let people talk, unless they're insulting. But I know again that there are very immature MPs in that uh, parliament on the opposition. So they shouldn't make speakers think they can treat any other member of parliament the way those deserve to be treated, the immature ones. Yeah, because with them, it's just about insults. It's about uh, lack of decorum in the house. But again, even those that sympathize with them, such as Mundubiri and uh, a few others, should not be lumped up together with that immature group. Mundubiri is a very professional man, and I think there was no need to, to do that to him. But also Mundubire should uh, realize that he is guiding everyone right. and uh, there is no need to come out the way he was coming out. No, Moses Moyo, Moses Moyo, <laughs> Moses Moyo. <laughs> at, at that particular point, you even reduce also the decorum of the house because if the referee doesn't have the integrity, the dignity that they need to have, because of your words. It means you have addressed uh, your own house. So he needs to turn down. If anything, even if he's right, he needs to apologize that I didn't tell my emotions the way I should have termed them in order for peace and what we can call dignity reign at parliament. Otherwise, I think uh, it was not necessary also on his part. Right, so we'll hear more from the viewers as they begin to call in. Uh, let's go to another story. Uh, this police again, they have added cancelling a planned uh, rally of the Socialist Party in Kitwe. There was a notification given to the Zambia police and uh, they, they replied that we can't allow you to go, uh, to go, to go ahead because of uh, security concerns. Story or history keeps on repeating itself. Yes, history keeps on repeating itself. But I also blame the <laughs> Socialist Party. Because mm. they were saying the president of the party is going to address the cost of living mm. and the jobs. Mm. <laughs> you know, right now, when mm. you talk about the high cost of living, it's a very uh, sensitive issue. It's a very sensitive issue. Right. People can even start rioting from the rally. <laughs> They, they, they should have used a certain language. What is it that he wanted to address? Not the cost of living. Is it wrong to be honest? I should lie to the police. I'm going to talk about, for example, uh, the debt restructuring. I want to appreciate the government for restructuring the debt. Then you go there and change the agenda. Again, you'll be penalized. Is it wrong to be honest in a democratic country like ours? It's not wrong, but uh, you need to understand who you are to understand who you are dealing with. Right. Yes, you need to understand who you are dealing with. Right. Because at the end of the day, you will not do what you are supposed to do. <laughs> the, the, what you are presenting will be used against you. You want to address the cost of... Because uh, the question is, how was it... To, to address it how? To complain to the people or to promise the people what he is going to do? Or to do the things that the people want done right away. So, so what is it to address? It's just about addressing the people. Mm. Because when you say the cost of living, you want to address it with the people. When you are not in power, how do you address it? Mm. Unless you say you want to interact with the people. You don't have to be specific. Right. That was a little bit... Uh, too much and uh, if for example I've been injured I have a soul and you know then you want to address someone on the on how to keep souls or how to bandage wounds when I'm struggling with my wound I may not allow you to talk about wounds mm. at that particular time you, you talk about a headache maybe now you're talking about a headache you bring in the wound mm. you would have used the headache to talk about the Let me give you so an example. Have talked about other issues. I want to give you an example. Uh, first of all, let's admit that uh, we live in a democratic space. 
yes. in which uh, citizens are supposed to be allowed to speak on whichever matter or subject they feel or they deem to be fit, provided it's being, it's being done within the confines of the law. So regardless of the subject, regardless of how critical the economic you know, environment has become, there's no law which stops you or me from either complaining to the general public, either from holding a press briefing and you know, emphasize the pain which the citizens are going through. Let me give an example, comrade. You remember in South Africa when the country was hardly hit with lot shedding, hardly hit with the economic issues, the ANC government allowed, or should I say the police, allowed the, uh, the EFF with Julius Malema and the other opposition leaders to hold a much protest. A, an economic shutdown was held without any uh, disruption. Why should Zambia uh, be a different uh, blueprint when it comes to democracy? You, you are saying we're in a democratic space. Yeah. I, I would want to argue. Mm. We are not <laughs> in a democratic space. South Africa is in a democratic space. Right. And as long as your public order act will remain the way it is, right. it will never allow any democracy. It will never allow any democracy. And, and that's why I think you, several, several you have said here mm. that I cannot sympathize mm. with the PF when they start complaining about what is happening to them. Mm. But with the Socialist Party, I can sympathize with them on that they need to be shrewd enough to understand that the democratic space is just inside their heads. It's not there. And they need to realize that they need to be as sharp as a serpent, mm. but as humble as a dove. And you don't go to talk about uh, addressing that that's being foolhardy. Mm. That's being foolhardy. They should have looked for other issues mm. what issues are we addressing they would have been allowed you go and talk about those issues mm. then in talking about those issues you bring in the issue of cost of living i've seen people getting arrested uh, you submit or you notify the police we're going to have this agenda being talked about when you go at uh, the gathering the moment you change the agenda the message people have been arrested in this country using the same public order act that you are talking about. So why should the Socialist Party be shrewd or be you know, clever in crafting what they want to talk about as they submit to the police and later on change? They will land themselves in trouble. There's, I think there's a picture that I'm, uh, I think uh, there's, the, the, the viewers are being subjected to. Of this, that's a story in the short there. Because the Zambia police, they claim that they didn't have uh, enough security manpower to go and protect the SP as they were going to be having their rally. But a very a huge presence of police officers were deployed to go and uh, stop or disrupt the event. Yeah, now, talking about the cost of living in itself mm. is not a, a, a crime in this country. So if you use other topics, but find yourself talking about the cost of living, mm. it's not a crime. <laughs> It's different from those people that asked for permission to march mm. against something, but later on they were busy propagating gay rights. Mm. Are you getting it? Yeah. yeah, that is a crime in this country. And you'll be arrested for that. And if those were clever now, but they were doing <laughs> a wrong thing. They were clever. They knew if we had to talk about gay rights, we'll be stopped. We'll be stopped. We'll not see the light of the day. This demonstration or much price will not take place. So let's talk about it. The only problem is that they are talking about useless things. Mm. Yeah. So they too, SP, mm. would have used a certain reason to talk about what they wanted to talk about. Right. But not where you just go directly. The cost of living. Mm. The cost of living, the police may even be justified for saying no. What if hungry people there start looting? Okay. When you talk about the cost of living and probably hunger, you say you haven't eaten, blah, 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 your friends are eating that side. They will rush as a mob to start ransacking some places. Mm. It's, it's, it's possible. So when the police tell you uh, security concerns, they may be justified, though you know that that one is not even a reason to talk about. Mm. Let's have enough time to speak to the viewers out there this evening and uh, let's hear what the viewers 
I'm saying Kola, good evening and welcome to the analysis. Good evening, Wati. Good evening, uh, tell us your name and where you're calling me from. This is Dan from Kaunda Square. Dan from Kaunda Square. Go ahead, you've got uh, two minutes. Yes. Uh, let me just disagree with uh, the case today. Uh, the one you are analyzing this matter. Mm. Let me disagree because even uh, the way he's explaining, it seems that he's talking side. Everyone in this country, Muno Zambia, we are all citizens. And then we should follow the law. And then we should respect the law. Regardless of a person where he's coming from. But in this country, now we have been done. Like the way you have asked him that it, is it possible that the social is bad? Sure. Social is bad. To the, to the police so that they can go and preach to another agenda. Let this spirit and let them Zambia continue. Let's speak the truth. Let us, let us go a step a step. Please, this is our country. Just to come back and work the example that benefit from Zambia and the world. Not each one side here. Not one side. You may conclude your two minutes is up. Yes, in the final program, but the case must be serious, please. Thank you. We should analyze the things so that we can be able to get them here. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thanks. All right, you can call us. Uh, the number is right on the screen there. I want to get a number of calls before we uh, proceed uh, with the reactions. Call good evening and welcome to the program. Hello? Hello, good evening and welcome to the analysis. Yes, uh, good evening, sir. And how are you? I'm all right. Uh, tell us your name and where you're calling us from. Yes, this is uh, Joseph Kazembe. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Rwansha. Thank you so much, Joseph Kazembe from Rwansha. Go ahead. Pardon? Please go ahead. You've got uh, two minutes. Yes, please. <clears throat> First of all, what is the name of the man that is discussing the analysis? That's Mr. Victor Muyumba. Mr. Muyumba. Yes, please. <laughs> the analysis that is giving is as good as that of Moyo. <laughs> that mm. man, there is no difference between him and Moyo. Because mm. if anything, you cannot tell the nation that the uh, the socialist parties were supposed to, to tell the police what to talk at the rally. There are, quite, there are a good number of discussions at the rally. I'm not a socialist party, but I'm PF. Mm. There are socialists when you were in the MMP, when people are traveling, they were uh, trying to remove the unit from the power. People are saying a lot of things against the UK the, the KK and the, how the country has plundered into uh, a poverty, absolute poverty and what have you. They never looked at 
So for that man to say that the people could be lost when you mention about poverty, that is a, an oversight. And I'm sorry, I, I did need him to say such a thing. Mm. And it's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like that. That is a lie. People cannot look for just for listening from what people are talking about. President Ichidema was talking quite a lot of things when in the opposition. Did the people look? Mm. They never did it. Because they had to follow what he was talking about. So them apply to, to the currency. You know, government. They are not the Igapi tolerant. They are afraid of their own shadow. Mm. They are supposed to listen to pay attention to the people's rights. Coming to Mundubile, Brian Mundubile is, you know, a very respected person. And Moyo, the way Moyo was talking to him, you cannot say that even Brian Mundubile was also wrong. It was not wrong. Just go a spade and a spade and not a big spoon. So, in that case, let us learn to appreciate and give good analysis to the people. Not that kind of analysis of trying to side with the police or to side with the government of the day. When the government is wrong, that puts out if it was an oversight by the government. All right, so you, you, you may conclude. Your time is up. Yes, you may. I conclude. Yes, please. Uh, let that man make a thorough and thought out analysis, not the way giving. It's far beyond to be an, an, an analysis. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for your call. Allow me to pick up uh, two more calls, and then from there we proceed with uh, the program. Uh, Caller, good evening, and uh, welcome to the program. Good evening, and welcome to the program. Are you able to reduce the volume on the TV set? Please reduce the volume on your TV set. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Go, go ahead. Good evening, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm crying. Talk about the people and the police in Mulera and Doctor, but socialist party will be to my bad. I will add you over kind of Kriba Kriba police. What I knew was that work at the Mutual Challenges, which has them, the last one that work in the Pantash. So when I am, you are police, but if you know Paku Kanya Rali, Kutira, Kuivala. Now, if you are a Chicago Moku, if you are a Chicago Musta Macampe, Yamaradi, you don't lay up a lady, while I start and go to the matter by Zimia and Shisha, you took up, Taiba, you know, every young go, I want to put a ticket young Gosana, no rule. So the police, the Hukanya, and Shinari, so take six things in the Jackson and Abakanya. Not there is the President, but Right. 
you may conclude thank, thank you so much I appreciate you all right uh, that was our last caller unfortunately we have to uh, end the program uh, let's find out what uh, messages have come through through you the viewers out there and I'll allow my guests to just uh, say one or two ways from there we call it uh, a night let me just read one or two uh, messages from um, the viewers out there okay this one is saying uh, good evening uh, comrade IP I love the subject talking about education and how you guys are analyzing issues I'm a teacher from Northwestern province and things are not okay on the ground I hope this message has uh, sunk in the minds of those that are supposed to make decisions uh, keep it up Mr. Munyumba we appreciate you that's Monga from Western Province. Thank you so much, Mr. Monga. Uh, this one is saying, uh, Brian Mundubile is just uh, okay. I'm happy to, I'm happy for what he did. The speaker, uh, what he did to the speaker, because the speaker is being, uh, is being chosen by the high authority. Hence, he wants to humiliate others, including Mundubile. People must be serious with governance. All right, there's no name there. I'm sure that you give us a name. So that we know the people that we are, chat, we are we are talking to, Mr. IP. Good evening. How many uh, police? How many police officers should be assigned to a rally to uh, to provide security? Um, HK from Wapula. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, HK from Wapula. We appreciate you. Uh, let's see what this one is saying. I think that man called Mr. Mumba should stop being part of the an, an analysis. Is biased towards the UPND. Even a statement I uh, has given that uh, Mr. Mundubile should have apologized. We know we all know that Mr. Mundubile is a well sober and educated man. What a speaker should have done was to give him chance to speak first of all, and later on listen and make a judgment, not stopping him. Unfortunately, there is no name on there. Uh, okay, so we end here. Um, you can react to some of the callers. Yeah. And uh, we <clears throat> call it a night. Okay, uh, let me react. Mm. You know, when you're in politics, you're supposed to be sharp. Right. I know I was going to <laughs> teach you sharpness. It, uh, no, by clapping for you even when you have failed to do what you should have done. As a politician, first of all, mm -hmm. don't be op opportunistic. That when there's an issue, that's when you want to come out to be propagating that particular issue. Even when things are okay, campaign, go around. Those that are in power, I've said, this democracy we are talking about is simply at the back of our minds. Public order act calls for sharp politicians. Shrewd polit politicians. <laughs> if it was such, uh, probably you would have done it the other way around. Maybe you didn't even have gone to those places that others wanted to go to. You would have gone to even a rural place. So you don't poke those that are in authority that, okay, I'll be sympathized with at the end of the day. But you didn't have achieved your goal. And this is what we are talking about. Right. We are saying they should have used another reason. Mm. To tell the truth, as long as you have that public order act, the police will always want to protect the government of the day. Who loses at the end? You are the one who loses. Why shouldn't it simply talk about notifying? Why should it be about the police allowing you, even when you have been given the, the right not only to assemble, but to behave? Security concerns that we talk about. These are imaginary issues, and they may be emanating from the same public order act. But at the end of the day, if you are told you are not going to go ahead because of your own failure to use intelligence, then you are to blame. How can you say to address the cost of living? And we expect those that are in power to say, okay, let him go and address the cost of living. They will not allow you. They will not allow you. It's because of the law which is there. Mm. Well, who, should, we who, should, who should prescribe the, 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 what an opposition leader or political party should talk about? Should it be at the discretion of the people in power? Or it must be an organization to decide what they want to talk about? You are talking about an ideal situation. <laughs> but here we are dealing with a real situation. Mm. And you continue to complain because you need to understand, okay, if this law is this bad, yeah. 
How can I still do my activities without being hindered or prevented from doing so? You need to be sharp. <laughs> Because we will be blaming the public order. Some of us are sick and tired of hearing people condemn the public order act. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is time now to start looking at how we can be doing what we want done with the knowledge of the public order act at the, end, at the back of our minds. Because if we know that this law is bad, but we want to face it head on, the law will always win at the end of the day. We will sit here, debate, and think, oh, okay, we are doing them a favor. No, it shouldn't be looking like that. Mm -hmm. It's the law which is there. And even the UPND, if they don't change this law, it will come to haunt them not long after they, they leave office. The way it has been to the PF. The PF are crying right now. Where were they? They were in power. And when others were complaining the way others are complaining now, they said, no, it's just good law. Mm -hmm. Let it be. So, it's good law. Right. Let me just answer the other question that was directed to me. Uh, somebody wanted to find out how many police officers are needed to police such kind of uh, an event. From the little information that I have, that I, it doesn't uh, really uh, prescribe, maybe you need more than 10. It could be even five police officers, it could be even three police officers uh, that can be capable to, that can be deployed to go and deploy such kind of uh, any rally that uh, of whichever uh, magnitude uh, you know you want to put up so what normally happens from the information i have is that uh, sometimes the police they will go into a dialogue a conversation with the conveners of that uh, yes. uh, meeting okay fine how many police officers do you need then they ask you uh, they can ask you then you can tell them okay we just need maybe about three or five because we also have some few demarches from our end as well that can help to police such an event yes. so that's the the number of police officers that are needed not more than even 50 more than 100 it's not like that but again in some cases when i mean where the state doesn't have even the two or three police officers they can allow you to go ahead okay do you have enough few uh, i mean a few marshals that can pro protect you they say yes okay go ahead provided don't break people's properties when you do that the names that are here of the conveners we are going to follow you and arrest you yes. <laughs> that's the little information i have i don't yes, know if i'm right it's true the, the way i've explained it that's the way it is but even if there was to be one police officer needed by the law mm. still they'll tell you all oh, our officers will be busy <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting it? Yeah. As a way of trying to ensure that uh, you don't proceed with what you want. Mm. That's what is there. So uh, we, we will sympathize, of course, with the socialist party here mm. and say, no, we should have said this and that. But that reason they gave, it was provoking. It was provocative. And that's the truth. You, 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 in simpler well, terms, why, you're saying... Why it was attractive or attract, attracting the, the attention of the, 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 the powers that be. Correct. And my question is, why shouldn't the UPND government now change the narrative? If the public order act was being abused under the PF, why should also the UPND ad administration go the same route of abusing the POA? We don't live in this country. We don't. Remember, there was unique. The MMD complaint. Mm. They came in. They maintained what you did maintain. Right. Are you getting it? Mm. And when they were maintaining that PF complaint, and they promised to change, they did it. They came into power. Mm. <coughs> UPND was complaining in opposition because of the same. <laughs> and now they are in power. We don't know. Because they are, they are still there. Whether they are going to do that or not. But this is what I'm telling you. That if they don't, the same thing will come to haunt them. Right. It's because... Maybe uh, power is sweet, but uh, it is very elusive and it's not long lasting. That's what everybody is supposed to understand. Right. We have to go and uh, converge uh, next week once again, Mr. Mumba. Thank you so much for coming through. You are welcome. Thank you. Uh, IP has been a pleasure. Fantastic. Discussing those topics here. Thanks. Yeah. Otherwise, to the viewers, we appreciate you as well for your viewership and uh, messages you've uh, been sending in to the program. We hope we can converge uh, next week on a Sunday. Thank you so much. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night.